Why is the new mood in the church the fact that heaven can wait? Why isn't everyone longing for our eternal home now? Listen, this is what's wrong. We're pastors mitigating their influence down to Sunday mornings. They're going to they're going to golf or surf or whatever they do during the week, and they're going to preach a thirty minute sermonette for Christianettes mm-hmm. on Sunday, and then wait around till next week. And I refuse that. Jan, I just flat out refuse that. These are perilous times. People are going to hell every day without the hope of Jesus. And pulpit should be more on fire right now. We are pastors, and we are to be fearless and filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking those things day in and day out, showing the love of God at all times to all men, but yet never compromising the truth. This is Understanding the Times Radio with Jan Markell. Jan meets with Pastor Jack Hibbs this hour to discuss how the church and the gospel are being legislatively attacked. Jack Hibbs is the senior pastor of Calvary Church in Chino Hills, California. He produces a nationally syndicated radio program, Real Life with Jack Hibbs. Today, Pastor Jack and Jan will be addressing several issues that could affect you in months to come. By the way, Pastor Hibbs will address our next fall conference, September 29th. We will tell you more about that event just a bit later in this broadcast. To get today's program started, here is Jan Markell. Well, California is sinking. People are leaving the state. The tax base is eroding. They're turning their their once beautiful cities into these sanctuary cities, which are just a little picture of hell. Uh, Just go to San Francisco and take a look at this once beautiful city and see what's happened to it. I'm just wanting the churches to realize they don't have to take this. The churches can be the voice. They can be the ones who can turn this state back to God and turn it back into a beautiful state. A hundred years ago, it were the pastors in every community across the United States who were the political leaders in their community. The churches have turned this over to, to politicians who have screwed it up. A hundred years ago, churches were responsible for the health care in our country. Uh, we had Presbyterian hospitals, Baptists, Catholics, Methodists. All of this is gone, and, and the government now has taken our health care, and, and they're ruining it. And I'm just saying, you know, if we're going to turn this thing around, it's going to have to be the church taking a stand and taking back that which was theirs at one time. And welcome to the program. My guest for the hour is Pastor Jack Hibbs, and many of you watch his presentations online, Real Life with Jack Hibbs, or hear him on Christian radio and TV. Jack analyzes current events, the culture. He's an outspoken defender of Bible prophecy or eschatology and its importance. And we're going to talk about current events, the culture, and eschatology for the hour. He also pastors Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, California, and uh, we're going to talk just a little bit about, well, we'll reference here California Bill AB 2943, because, friends, there is a war against righteousness, and in some places it's coming down, do you choose God or do you choose government? Let me just review the bill AB 2943, that That bill suggests that the sale of any book that states the practice of homosexuality or transgender identification as immoral actions would be illegal in California, and this would include the Bible. The bill's sponsors deny all of this, but the legal experts agree that this bill, AB 2943, is so broadly worded in its description of prohibited activities that it can easily be interpreted to stop the sale goods and services that promote the biblical worldview. Now, you heard that little intro by Franklin Graham, who was asking the church to turn this country around because politicians likely will never do it. And parts of California, as Franklin Graham said, resemble hell due to their sanctuary city policy, their runaway rampant liberalism, and the glorification of many things that are just plain blatantly evil. To talk about this, and we'll hit some other topics as well, well, uh, Pastor Jack Hibbs. Pastor Jack, welcome back to the program. Jan, thank you so much. Listen, would you hold, and I've talked to you before on air and off air, and I think you would hold the churches partly responsible for this kind of condition. And you and I know there are many God-fearing pastors in California and everywhere else, not to mention wonderful believers who are really, really troubled by all of this. 
Well, because I have a high view of God's Word and a high view of the Church, I actually hold the Church and its pastors responsible. I really do. Franklin Graham is exactly correct. The issue of our condition in the state of California is due to the fact that pulpits and pastors have become silent, yeah. and let's be honest, there's no relevancy to the church. Now, somebody might say, no, we've got smoke machines and lights and guitars and this right. and that. Listen, you can have all that you want. That's not a curse. That's not a blessing. The issue is this, that we have so lowered the standard of the high view of God's Word to compromise for what? To get people into the doors. The church has no voice. The church has no voice in California any longer, for that matter, the state, because and beyond the state because she's not that city on the hill that John Winthrop talked about. Franklin is right. We need to get back. And uh, California is in a mess. And I got to tell you, a lot of people, naturally, Jan, have written California off decades ago. It's different this time. AB 2943 will infect, and I'm using that proper word, infect, all 50 states. This is something that is so crafted. It is so devilish in its authorship that when we press those authors regarding the bill, they say, no, 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 don't worry. All books that try to say that homosexuality is wrong, we don't mean the Bible. Well, when was the last time you could trust a politician? It's, if there was ever a slippery slope, this is, this is that slope beyond. It's a cliff, Jan. And what happens in California never stays in California. Right. This will spread across all 50 states. And you said it rightly. It is a bill that has been crafted by, authored by a homosexual assemblyman. And it is a bill that if it becomes law would make it illegal for a state licensed counselor, be they secular or religious, or a minister being paid or a conference being hosted and they have maybe a fee or they're selling books, that in any way, shape or form disparages the LBGTQ community and their action. And it's also been nicknamed an anti-conversion bill. I'm not making it up, people. Mm -hmm. It's been labeled as an anti-conversion bill. They do not believe, the California legislature does not believe that a person can be changed. And to offer someone the opportunity to be changed falls under fraudulent business practices in the state of California. This is where the government has not only stepped into the pulpit, has not only gone after our Bibles, but I never thought I'd ever say such a thing as I'm going to say now. Our California state legislature is suing and making illegal the ministry of the Holy Spirit to convict someone, to love someone, to help them out of adultery or bank robbery, for that matter, or lesbianism or by gender. It's an attack on the very person of the Holy Mm. Spirit, and it's a robbery of hope. All right. You're listening to Understanding the Times Radio, folks. I'm Jan Markell. On the line from California, Pastor Jack Hibbs, one of my speakers, Understanding the Times, 2018, Saturday, September 29th. We'll say more as we go into the program. You know, Pastor Jack, as Franklin Graham said, 100 years ago, the pastors were the trendsetters, the leaders, the go-to people. 200 years ago, we had the black-robed regiment with pastors actually getting seriously involved in what the government was doing. And and now so many are retreating, and they'll say, we have to have separation of church and state, etc. And and I have heard you give a message, you know, is God political? Because I think the church feels that they should not be political, and yet uh, God's political. I mean, he raises up political leaders, and he takes them down for various reasons. And as we all know the saying, all that's needed for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. And if men don't follow you, uh, Pastor Jack Hibbs, and and do something about this, we're going to see a calamity of biblical proportion. Well, isn't it interesting, Jan? Proverbs verse 2 says that when the wicked are in power, the people groan, but when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. If God didn't get involved in everything, including including government, which, by the way, he's the designer of government. Let's remember that. That's a holy institution designed by God from the book of Exodus. But if if God didn't get involved in politics or government, we would know nothing of David. David was a king. Mm -hmm. We would know nothing about Isaiah. He worked in the court of Israel. 
We wouldn't know anything about Jeremiah. We would know nothing about Daniel, our beloved prophetic That's book right. of Daniel, because That's Daniel, right. because of political situations, was brought in under the reign of a king and served the king. Listen, this is what's wrong. We're pastors mitigating their influence down to Sunday mornings. They're going to they're going to golf or surf or whatever they do during the week, and they're going to preach a 30-minute sermonette for Christianettes mm-hmm. on Sunday, and then wait around till next week. And I refuse that. Jan, I just flat out refuse that. These are perilous times. People are going to hell every day without the hope of Jesus. And pulpits should be more on fire right now. As you said, the Black Robe Regiment or the pulpits being the centerpiece of a community. That's why churches in in American antiquity, archaeologically, churches are always at the center of a town. There was a reason for that. We need to throw off this yoke of popularity. You know, we need to stop being worried about what people say about Facebook or how many likes we have. That's insanity. We are pastors. And we we are to be fearless and filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking those things day in and day out, showing the love of God at all times to all men, but yet never compromising the truth. And I'm begging, I'm praying to the Lord that God would raise up a fire out of California. Because listen, if a revival starts, I am jealous for California. I'm mm. born and raised here. Mm-hmm. I'm praying for a revival. Because if it can happen in California, like it did in Nineveh, it can sweep this nation. Pastors need to get Get back to the Word and preach it as though it's their last day on earth to preach it. So, for example, just uh, this June 12th, I went to, as I did with many other pastors and concerned citizens, we flew up to Sacramento. We gathered at the state capitol because our legislature there gathered together, and they voted to uphold and to forward and to make law, AB 2943, which now, as you've watched the news across the nation, it's been discussed on every news channel. What does it mean? Well, we know for sure it means this. The government of California has stepped into the pulpit and has removed the microphone, unplugged speakers. More than that, the the government of California has put duct tape across the pastor's mouth, shutting him up from giving hope to anyone who's struggling with lesbianism, anyone struggling with bisexuality, anyone struggling with homosexuality, anyone struggling with questioning, we can't talk to them anymore. The government has said no to the pastor, no to the Christian counselor. You will not speak to them. So where does this leave us? Where does this leave me, my church, the churches in California? We will either bow down to government or we will stand calling out to God. And that's what's happened On June 12th, that's what has happened in my state. Mm. And wherever you're at, my friends, it's coming next to you. It's coming to my listeners' neighborhoods, no matter where they are. It's coming to my listeners' neighborhood. Here's another pastor speaking out, actually, in your neck of the woods, Jack. Appreciate Pastor Shane Eidelman of Westside Christian Fellowship. And he's speaking out. There's this real short clip here I'd like to play. Why can everybody voice everything else but the pulpit needs to be silent? It makes no sense. Let me tell you why. Because they want to silence the voice of truth. California pastor Shane Eidelman goes on a tirade over the liberal left, wanting to silence the pulpit on hot-button issues. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Spirited Debate. I'm Lauren Green. Now, Pastor Eidelman from Westside Christian Fellowship in Southern California seemed to hit a breaking point. But is he right? Is the liberal left trying to keep conservative religious voices from speaking? And here to debate, Pastor Shane Eidelman himself and Christopher Hale, the founder of the Francis Project. Welcome to you both. Thank you for having us. Good to be here. Thank you. Okay, Pastor Shane, I want to talk with start with you because were you at a breaking point? Because sure. it sounded a little like Jack Nicholson when he said in the movie, you know, you can't handle the truth. Why the passion here? And and how have you been silenced? I mean, you, you seem to be speaking very clearly on the pulpit there. Well, that's a good point. And this has been building for many years, not only in, in my own life, but I know if you talk to churches around America, uh, Americans, uh, believers, that just everything from Facebook to YouTube to the silencing to the, the media twisting a lot of things. And you get to a point where you you just say, you know what, enough is enough. The pulpits need to be beacons of light. The pulpits need to start talking about difficult issues. Uh, For many years when the nation was first built, the pulpit used to set the tone for the nation and and versus everybody spinning things. And so I think we don't want to confuse passion with arrogance and anger. I'm not angry. I'm very
very passionate about how far basically the nation has drifted. And any time we want to speak up and speak about uh, controversial issues, it seems that everything is, is, is trying to be silenced and remove God from the schools, from the government, the Supreme Court looking at not laws uh, from a moral standpoint anymore, but more of what is politically correct. So I think uh, trying to be that voice in the wilderness and, and drawing people back to what God's Word says is the motivation. Jack Hibbs, Shane Eidelman is right. The world is trying to silence the voices of truth from the media, Facebook, Google, Apple, the politicians in Washington, our schools. The Christian worldview is simply under attack. And you know what? Here's the bottom line with my listeners. They're feeling discouraged. They're feeling defeated sometimes Mm -hmm. because all of this darkness being thrown at them and all these laws. And I mean, I think it's a little bit brighter day with, uh, with Donald Trump in office. But of course, that's a political solution, not a spiritual solution. Well, you know what? Let me encourage people. And I hope you all take this right. Should we not be rejoicing at this time? Number one, we are in a battle. Glory be to God, right? If we weren't born again believers, we wouldn't be in a battle. We would just be going along with all the rest of the people. The Lord has opened up our eyes. And look, Jan, you and I love Bible prophecy. We love it. Well, I'm going to give you some Bible prophecy. Here it is in 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. Now, the Holy Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. That's Bible prophecy. We're living that out in California as I speak. So I'm encouraged. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. The word perilous here means to grind like a, a woodcrafter grinds or planes a board into a toothpick. Evil come and nonstop. Right. Oh, dear church, don't give up. Get excited. Literally, praise God that you have a fight to fight because you are in the light. The world is in the darkness. You know the difference. In fact, and I, I speak for Jan. I know her, her heart. She's got the heart of a Deborah. If we were not engaged in a fight for righteousness, then I'd rather be in heaven now because I don't want to go to Disneyland. I don't want to do one more thing. No, I don't want to go to a movie. There's nothing to live for in this world except the things that concern God. That's what floats my heart. And these are encouraging times because Jesus said it the best. When you see these things begin to pass, Look up, because your redemption draws near. Any day now, hallelujah, let's fight for righteousness. Listen, it doesn't matter if we win the battle. The fact is, the Bible says we've won the war. I want to stand before God and be able to say, well, Lord, I lost that one in Sacramento. I lost that one in Los Angeles. And he's going to look at me and say, but Jack, you stood and you win. As Jack said in the opening part of this segment, imagine government in California is targeting the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and if that isn't an end time phenomenon, as he's just outlined here, I can't imagine what is. And uh, you can learn a lot more about Jack Hibbs, reallifewithjackhibbs.org, reallifewithjackhibbs.org. I would never miss his updates that he has, particularly online, but you can catch him on radio, some of the TV outlets as well. I know he's airing, and he will be with us Saturday, September 29th, along with a whole lineup of other outstanding speakers, J.D. Farag, Amir Sarafati, Billy Crone, my goodness, Eric Barger, and Jack Hibbs, and I'm probably missing someone. It's because it's such a big lineup for the day. And I'm going to say more about that in a little promo that's coming up here in just a couple of seconds. And I'm going to say another word about uh, ticketing and live streaming, which will be offered at no cost this year. So I'm coming back in just a couple of minutes. We're going to continue our discussion talking with Jack Hibbs, pastor of Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, California. And again, reallifewithjackhibbs.org is a good place to check him out. Back in just a couple of minutes. Don't go away, don't touch your dial. Today's radio guest, Jack Hibbs, will be appearing at this fall's Understanding the Times conference on September 29. Overcrowded conditions in past years at our conference venue, Grace Church of Eden Prairie, Minnesota, required making this coming event a ticketed event. For information on ordering your conference tickets, please visit our website, olivetreeviews.org. If you're unable to attend the conference in person, you'll be able to watch it stream live from our website, olivetreeviews.org. To obtain your own recording of today's broadcast, call our order line, 
1-800-559-4444. Remember, Understanding the Times Radio is a listener-supported ministry. We stay on the air through the generosity of faithful listeners. You too can help us maintain this program. Please pray for us, and your tax-deductible gifts are welcome when you write to Olive Tree Ministries, Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. Understanding the Times 2018 is not that far away. Saturday, September 29th, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Please note the earlier starting time. There are still tickets available for $10, $15, and $20. Visit our website, olivetreeviews.org, and go to conferences or contact brushfire.com. I'll give you an 800 number as soon as you get a pencil and paper. Don't miss the like-minded fellowship as well, as our cutting-edge speakers include Pastor Jack Hibbs, Pastor J.D. Farag, Pastor Billy Crone, Eric Barger, and Amir Sarfati. Headlines today are a harbinger of his return. We'll unpack that Saturday, September 29th. Learn to be a watchman on the wall. We live in challenging times, but things aren't falling apart. They're falling into place. Learn how at Understanding the Times 2018. For tickets, order online or call Brush Fire at 888-338-5338. That's 888-338-5338. The conference will be live streamed on our website, olivetreeviews.org, at no cost. But wait a minute, Pastor, if you're listening to this program, and I hope you are, you're speaking what, on the book of Romans? You're speaking from 1 Corinthians chapter 6? At what point does this slippery slope turn into a landslide to where it's interpreted, and we know how California goes, it's interpreted that if a pastor is counseling someone who wants out of the LBGTQ environment, it would be illegal, possibly illegal for him to do that. What they're really trying to do is legislate the conviction work and the salvation work of the Holy Spirit in the life of someone who wants to get out of that lifestyle. They're condemning that person from having hope. Chino Hills Calvary Church Senior Pastor and the host of Real Life with Jack Hibbs is Jan's guest today on Understanding the Times. Let's return now to their conversation. Let me get this straight. Let me, let me see if you're following me here. You can have your gun protest, your Twitter, you can Twitter your favorite candidate. You can lie in the media. You can teach evolution to our kids. You can flaunt sexual sin and gay marriage. You can teach preschool kids about transgenderism. You can support murdering a child in the womb, but I need to keep my mouth shut? Oh, no, I don't think so. Now, listen, I'll give you this when you... When you pry it out of my cold, dead hands, that's what it should say. You know the old saying, you, you can have my gun when you pry it out of my cold, dead hands. You can have the Bible. Why can everybody voice everything else but the pulpit needs to be silent? It makes no sense. Let me tell you why. Because they want to silence the voice of truth. God's word has something to say about murdering children. God's word has something to say about the sanctity of life. God's word has to say something about he created them male and female that they be joined together. It has something to say about putting on men's clothing if you're a woman. It has something to say. So why silence the voice of truth? And welcome back again. That was the voice of Shane Heidelman of Westside Christian Fellowship in Leona Valley, California, I think speaking and passionately, by the way, and that's because the topic is a passionate one. Again, the world is uh, attacking the voice of reason. Righteousness is under attack. That's an understatement. And uh, just a word here about my conference activity. Again, the live streaming. And folks, you might want to get together a group about your Sunday school class, adult fellowship your home fellowship on Saturday, September 29th. The time, central time, will be 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., but programming will be archived. Even if you turn in, tune in at noon, you can still go back and watch the opening sessions of our conference on Saturday, September the 29th, here in the Minneapolis-St. Paul region. Pastor Jack Hibbs, my guest for the hour, is one of my speakers for that event. And tickets are nearly sold out now. We have about... 
uh, probably 95% sold out, but you might want to check. And if you want to just call and make a, a phone inquiry as to available seating, it's 888-338-5338, 888-338-5338. Pastor Jack Hibbs, you heard the passion there in Shane's voice as um, you know, we're told to be quiet about everything that's righteous. What I'd like to do, and by the way, we did have victory. Jack Phillips, the baker, won. This is some weeks ago now in the Supreme Court, and that was a real praise the Lord day. I'm sure you would agree. Yeah, absolutely. It's rather embarrassing, though, isn't it, that we have to have uh, court cases like this? Jen, I don't know about you, but not everything in my life has gone the affirmative. Mm -hmm. I've actually been told no at times in my life. Maybe you've been told no sometimes in your life. Indeed. Listen, this is an amazing amazing testimony to the depravity of our culture. That's true. This homosexual pair, they were told, no, I'll point you to other bakers. Uh, you can even buy cakes off of my shelf, but I won't personalize, personalize your cake. It's my religious preference. I can't do that, but I'll help you find a cake somewhere else. They said, no, 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 no. We don't take no for an answer, and we're not going to stand for that, and we're going to go after you. This goes to tell you that it was a literal planned attack, yeah. and yet that's how the enemy of freedom works. I don't care how you package it. it. That is an enemy of freedom. And let's talk about tolerance. Listen, Shane was very passionate about what he was speaking on, and as I am. He and I both are often labeled as being upset, angry, because we're passionate. But isn't it interesting that our detractors, they're passionate, and they're very, very, you know, outspoken, and no one dares say anything to them about that. As a Christian, I am to tolerate others. That's what my Bible teaches. But uh, those that detractors, they don't have to tolerate us. They don't want to tolerate us. This is not a two-way street. And uh, so I agree wholeheartedly with the Supreme Court. Listen, let's give honor where honor's due. This court decision at the Supreme Court was a result of Neil Gorsuch, who was a result of Donald Trump, who was a result of people voting for a change in this nation. And I thank God that the Lord is using an unusual candidate, now president, to do some things that I thought I would never see come from a president, and we're seeing the fruit of it now. Jackie, Gibbs, let me play a one-minute clip here, Dr. Robert Jeffress, his comment on all of this, and I'd like to get your response. I think this court has changed under this president, uh, with Neil Gorsuch there now today. It's changed in several ways, not just with the addition of Neil Gorsuch. And here's what I mean, Bill. Just as President Obama's hostility toward conservative Christians created an atmosphere that was conducive to the original charges against Jack Phillips, I believe President Trump's faith-friendly attitude has created an atmosphere in America that is conducive to the kind of ruling we saw in the Supreme Court yesterday. You know, the Supreme Court rarely leads public sentiment. It follows public sentiment. And I think there's a general turning in America toward uh, faith friendliness. Well, well, I think we all can agree based on the ruling from yesterday, instead of being narrow, narrow in scope, we'll probably come back. And I think we probably both agree on that. Sir, thank you for your time today. Okay. Yes. Uh, You bet. Robert Jeffers. Okay, Jack Hibbs, I think the point is, and you and I were probably making this point in November of 2016 when you and I recorded a program together. We were hoping that a new administration would become a more faith-friendly administration. Right. And and we have seen that come to... We're not dealing with the perfect person in the presidency because you and I aren't perfect either, but we've turned a corner from faith antagonism to faith-friendliness. Well, you know what, Jan? I'm going to go out. I'm, I'm going to say something that it's just honest, and I've I've kept back from saying it because it's just not the you know the politically correct thing to do. But I voted for Donald Trump because I like Mike Pence. Does that make sense? Sure. And I voted for his policies. I am more than pleased. I'm elated. I pray for Trump every day. Yeah, I understand all the stuff about his past life. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know what? Who cares? I didn't elect him based upon his morality. I got to tell you something. And Jan, you and I know I've got some friends that are inside the White House. I challenge people to look at Donald Trump today and the Donald Trump who was a year ago or two years ago. There's, there's a transformation going on with the man. I'm not saying he's a born-again believer. I'm saying that something's going on. This, I can say as a matter of fact, this man has stood against the world to defend Israel. That's right. This man has stood against the world to the possibility of being assassinated to proclaim Jerusalem as the capital. These are epic things. The unborn. When was the last time you saw a Democrat or Republican president take on Planned Parenthood face-to-face without flinching 
but this president. This president has been more God-friendly. I'm going to go beyond faith-friendly. He has done more in 500-plus days to please the doctrine of God's Bible than any president. Look, I'm a Ronald Reagan guy, but i got to tell you, as it stands right now, 500 and so many days into his presidency, Trump is outdoing Ronald Reagan, and that's a big thing for yep, me to say. That is, that is. You're listening to Understanding the Times Radio. I'm Jan Markell. I have on the line from California, and we spent opening segment and part of this, talking about some of the dilemmas of California and some of the attack on people of faith, the Christian worldview, etc. I'm going to transition now into a little bit different topic, and we've been dealing with that now for the first part of the program. And by the way, you can learn a lot more at reallifewithjackhibbs.org, reallifewithjackhibbs.org. Here's where I want to transition, Pastor Jack, and that is I, uh, I recently came across an article. It was in the Guardian magazine. And it's, I think that's out of the UK. And it simply yeah. stated that there's a, an overwhelming end time weariness. And, and they call it rapture fatigue. They call it some other things too, but I'm trimming it down here. The fact that the king is coming has become sort of ho hum news to most, referring to Christians, really. The fact that life on this planet may have a sudden and abrupt ending almost seen as kind of negative. In other words, heaven can wait. In fact, most Christians in the churches today hope it will wait. And this is the tragedy, Jack, of my lifetime. I never thought I would see the day. And I actually, I wrote an article on all of this, and we're not going to take time to read it. But let me summarize a little bit so that you and I could at least discuss how this happened, why it happened, when it happened. And if you just allow me to make some points here so I can get your response. The article said that it goes by several end time weariness, rapture fatigue. The results are basically the same. The scoffers and the skeptics are gaining too much territory and too many followers. The fact that the king is coming is boring. It's old news. What Hal Lindsey wrote in 1969 in his classic The Late Great Planet Earth in the Eyes of Many, it didn't come to pass. Thus, there's kind of a collective so what sigh. And as I said a moment ago, heaven can wait. Now here, let me just hit four bullet points and get your response, Jack, because in the Guardian article, it talked about the destruction of the new Christian progressiveness. Well, we've just talked about political progressiveness in the first part of this program, and and here are some of the ways it's playing out. Evangelicals, this is an accusation, evangelicals have sided with the wrong side. In other words, don't you folks know that hundreds of Palestinians are being murdered? I'm not my words, by the way, being murdered by Israelis at the Gaza border. Point number two of this article in The Guardian, the late great planet Earth and the Left Behind series prophesied a lot of things that have not yet come to pass. We have waited long enough. Let's move on from their message. Point number three that this article made, those who hung on the words of the popular 1970s Larry Norman song, I wish we'd all been ready, have also waited long enough. Sure, life was filled with guns and war and everyone got trampled on the floor. But so what? Almost 50 years later, the world is still groaning. Nothing has changed. Point number four, we've been through all of this before. That's sort of the sentiment. That's what's replaced apocalyptic fervor. In other words, we've been through all this before has replaced apocalyptic fervor and a longing for waiting for the Lord's return. There's nothing new under the sun. Uh, There's more to this story than that. I want to stop there and I want to get your response response to what I've stated so far. That was one of the most encouraging things, Jan, I've heard you say in a long time. Let me explain. (laughs) You went down that list, and immediately I turned in my Bible to 2 Peter 3. Yes. Why? It says, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lust, and this is what they'll say. Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers have fallen asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning. For this, they are willfully ignorant. Jan, your recital of that Guardian article, notice the fallacies, and I may miss a few, but I'll point a few things out. The Bible says people are going to give up on waiting. They're talking about giving up on waiting. The Bible says that apathy is going to rule 
in the end. Many times, Jan, you and I have used and talked about the remnant church. Yeah. This article is nearly hilarious if it wasn't so sad, because the Bible answers that in the very last days of his soon coming, there will be people saying, why hasn't he come yet? I'm tired of waiting for him. I'm giving up. And then what's funny, sad, funny, is that they say, it's time to move on. Really? Where are you going to go? Yeah. <laughs> where are you going? You're going to go to your pub there and drink your life away in the UK, where the Guardian is at? What are you going to do? You're going to draw another line of cocaine and then try to soothe your sorrow? Where are you going to go? Many will do exactly that, Jack. They're doing it now, Jan, because people are giving up. And here's the reason why they're giving it up. They're going to churches that don't teach the eminency of God's coming. There's no fire behind the word, meaning that there's no unction to it, because it's, it's a one-hour-a-week Christian life. God's not into that. And so what's happening is your spirit, your faith grows cold. It, it becomes stagnant from lack of use. You're not serving the body of Christ. You're not worshiping. You're not praying. You're not giving. You're not involved. And you become this sidelined entity where you once claimed to have believed in God, and now you're off the side of the road. Listen, my friends, don't let that happen to you. Mm -hmm. What Jan just read a moment ago, I'm not kidding. She was encouraging me because my Bible says there'll be mockers and scoffers yeah. in the last days. You know, there's more to it than those opening paragraphs, and I'm th these are my comments, and that is, you know, we've had some date setters come along, most of them kind of kooky people, Edgar Wisenhunt, yep. Harold Camping. They set dates, nothing happened. Hal Lindsey never said 1988 was the date nope. of the rapture, and that's the accusation against him. He didn't say that. He suggested 40 years after 1948 was an intriguing date, and we should keep our eye on it. That's all he said. So we've got the date setters. And then we've got those who are rather prominent, who are pushing back on this message. And I, I'm just going to name a few names. I, I could name two dozen names. For instance, we've got the Hope for the Holy Land, which uh, hit the Twin Cities six years ago. Lynn Heibel's World Vision and others, they team up uh, to condemn Israel as, as almost barbaric persons persecutors of the Palestinians in their one-sided Hope for the Holy Land tour across America. I was present. My producer, Larry Kutzler, was present at Hope for the Holy Land at my alma mater, Bethel University. Uh, Jack, are you at all familiar with this uh, activity? Uh, no, but, but those that you're mentioning and their movement, I'm aware of. His particular, I'm not. Yeah, well, Lynn Heibels and, and World Vision, they, I'm not sure if they're still doing it cross-country, but they would present Israel as the root of the problem of all the issues in the Middle East, and you and I know that is not true. We've got others out there bashing, and I, I don't know what Frankie Schaefer is drinking. I played a clip of him with Amir Sarfati on air here a few weeks ago, and he uh, joined the Eastern Orthodox Church, which really isn't my point, but he went into a tirade on MSNBC recently with Joy Reid, completely mocking and condemning the Left Behind books. He compared them to the Twilight Zone category. That was Frankie Schaefer's son of Frank and Edith Schaefer. You've got internet broadcaster Rick Wiles consistently saying that dispensationalists and Christian Zionists are the root of the world's problems and also the church's problems, and we're destroying the world. I've got some more illustrations I want to give, and I'll do that in my closing segment. But Jack, my point is, we've got voices who really should know better that are pushing back against the truth here. Jan, I mentioned earlier in our time together that in the last days, there'll be those advancing the doctrines of demons. Yep. I don't care about their status. I don't care about their PhDs, their degrees, their pulpits, their names. I don't care about their publications. It's irrelevant. And so, you know, the truth of the matter is, the God of the Bible is crystal clear. If you would just read what he has to say, God is absolutely anti-replacement theology. These people all lean toward the yes, replacement theology. Right. The church is Israel. By the way, that's the only way you can get the church going through the tribulation period yeah. is by making it Israel. There's eschatology is all messed up, among many other things. But, you know, it's amazing because... They are actually aligning themselves up against the God of Israel, being reconstituted as he promised in Ezekiel 36 and many other places, and Joel and Amos. He's bringing them back into their own land. He even said, I would do it and in unbelief. They would come back. That's right. And they failed to recognize this. And, and by the way, Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins wrote a fantastic series. Neither one of those guys claimed that it was the fifth gospel or in addition to the Bible. Yep. 
were books written by guys. Never did they put it up in the place or st- statute as the Bible. And yet, this is the fallacy of their attack. They, oh, you know, Tim LaHaye or, you know, these people. Well, who cares? Who cares? It's not the Bible. Why don't you read the Bible and you'll be okay? <laughs> Here's where I want to go here, Jack, in our closing segment, because we're going to end on a very positive note. Last night, I enjoyed watching you online. You gave a wonderful, uplifting message about the hope of the rapture. We're in a hopeless world right now. I don't care what, how many things we try to do to make it better. Probably not going to help a whole lot. It's pretty hopeless, but we have a blessed hope on the horizon. And I want to spend just a few minutes talking about that. And we'll do that when I get back, folks. I want you to, to please stick around. I've got another closing segment with Pastor Jack Hibbs, Calvary Chapel, Chino Hills, California, and Real Life with Jack Hibbs.org, where you can find video, audio, radio, TV, YouTubes, everything that will absolutely, because I, I spent an hour hour, hour and a half last evening at Real Life with Jack Hibbs, and I was so blessed and uh, encourage you to do the same. I'm back in just a minute or two. Don't go away. Keeping up with the times is a daily activity for the Understanding the Times radio team. Through this program, every weekend, we share what we're learning with you. We stay in touch with you through our website. Olivetreeviews.org is constantly changing with news headlines, e-news alerts, and the latest radio program. For the latest on how current events are tracking with Bible teaching, join us often online at olivetreeviews.org. To order a compact disc recording of today's broadcast, phone 763-559-4444. The order line number again, 763-559-4444. We get our mail at Olive Tree Ministries, Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. Stay with us for our final segment, coming right up. Olive Tree Ministries is carrying a new product to help you contend for the faith and understand the times. It is Terry James' new book, Deceivers, Exposing Evil Seducers and Their Last Day's Deception. Our generation is characterized by deceiving tactics in the church, the media, the schoolroom, the government, the globalist agenda, and much, much more. I have contributed a chapter in the book talking about the deception that has invaded the church in the last 30 years. Find the book in our web store at olivetreeviews.org, the hardbound 320-page reference book. You can call us to order at 763-559-4444, 763-559-4444. It is also featured in our print and e-newsletter. Sign up online. Don't let the deceivers fool you or those you care about. Many are falling for these deceptions and delusions of our day. Stay in tune and up to date. Order Deceivers today. This program brings you the hope every weekend that reinforces the truth that God is in control. We are Understanding the Times Radio with Jan Markell. We watch for Jesus because it's Jesus who died for us at the cross, rose again from the dead for our justification. We are his people on earth now, on this enemy-occupied territory called earth. We are spreading the gospel of hope. We're trying to rescue as many men and women and boys and girls as is possible before he comes back. The unthinkable will have happened. The time for choosing sides will have ended. And the tribulation period will commence. The church will be in heaven. And God's prophetic plan will be put into hyperdrive. And people who are not watching, not ready, and not willing to receive him will miss it. And I don't want any one of your hearers to be in that crowd. Understanding the Times continues for the conclusion now of today's conversation with Pastor Jack Hibbs, Jan Markell. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ, that is their bodies, will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up. That's the word rapture in Latin, harpazo in Greek. Two words in English, cut up, together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. 
Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. We need to remember these words, this doctrine in the Bible in times like these. We need to remember that what's going on is not the world that you and I belong to anymore. It doesn't mean we divorce ourselves from this world. It means that we are in it and that we're reaching out and that we are loving and that we're telling the truth from the Bible to the world around us. But to remember this, Jesus Christ is coming back to take us home. This is not home. Boy, was that a statement, a statement and a half. Pastor Jack Hibbs, Real Life with Jack Hibbs.org. Just a couple of comments before we wrap up this hour. Remember, this program is always posted to my website Saturday morning, olivetreeviews.org, olivetreeviews.org. New program every Saturday morning. If you'd like to just get the oneplace.com app, mobile app, it'll download for you Saturday morning to your phone and other devices, oneplace.com. Sign up for their app there. Get a CD of any program. Consider CD subscription. And won't you please look into to my print and e-newsletter and uh, follow me on Twitter, Olive Tree Men. We're very active on Facebook, Jan Markell's Olive Tree Ministries. I want to say one quick word and forgive the uh, kind of mantra of announcements, but they're important. If you are hearing impaired and you want to come to our September 29th conference, we've got a special section for you, but you do need to contact the Brush Fire Ticketing Agency for that, 888-338-5338. Same for handicap. You need to call the Brush Fire Agency, 888-338-5338 for either of those two categories so that we can get you special seating. Again, our speakers, Pastor Jack Hibbs, Pastor Billy Crone, J.D. Farag, Amir Sarfati, and Eric Barger. Saturday, September the 29th, live streaming available, no cost, olivetreeviews.org. Get a little group together and, and enjoy the day. It'll be archived. You can enjoy it probably forever. I wanted to kind of summarize and wrap things up here in the very few minutes that we have left. We're talking about the, again, the attack on Bible prophecy and, and equally troubling as the attack is, is the indifference. And that's what the article in The Guardian was writing about, is that there's now end time fatigue, rapture fatigue. We've got all sorts of burnout going on. We've heard it all before. Why don't you guys uh, maybe change your, your attack a little bit? Because what you've been doing, you know, all the things you said would happen, they haven't happened. Well, quite frankly, they have. Have you ever seen a, a alignment in the Middle East like we've got going now? Have you ever seen the apostasy raging in the churches? So lots of things have come to pass, but the mockery goes on. Uh, Jack Hibbs, let me just comment quickly here. Another thing that's uh, come on the scene to knock out what you and I believe heavily, which is premillennial dispensationalism, pre-trib rapture and all, is a theology called dominionism or kingdom now theology, which says the church is going to make the world perfect and only then can Jesus return. Well, you know, how's that working out? And it's a real problem, this theology that's come along. But for some of us who have lived long enough, yeah. I kind of say that with tongue in cheek, this was the theology of pre-World War One. That's right. The, then, they thought this was it. The world's going to get better and better and better, and then two world wars happened. Right. This theology recycles. It's, I believe it's a doctrine of demons. It, it makes its circuit. It's nothing new. For me anyway, Jan, the hope is this. There's three portions of Scripture that I hang on to daily. And the one is, is my life verse. It's Titus 2.13, mm -hmm. looking for... Now listen, friends, forget about your feelings, forget about the news, forget about what you just saw on Facebook. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's Titus 2.13. The second one is John 14, 1 to 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go now to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And then here's the final one, Luke 21, 36. Watch, therefore. Notice, he didn't ask us a thing about our feelings. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come, come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. We watch for Jesus because it's Jesus who died for us at the cross, 
rose again from the dead for our justification. We are his people on earth now, on this enemy-occupied territory mm-hmm. called earth. We are spreading the gospel of hope. We're trying to rescue as many men and women and boys and girls as is possible before he comes back. But glory be to God, there's going to be an interruption, Jan. It's going to shock people when those that they know loved Jesus will suddenly be gone. The unthinkable will have happened. The time for choosing sides will have ended and the tribulation period will commence. The church will be in heaven and God's prophetic plan will be put into hyperdrive and people who are not watching, not ready and not willing to receive him will miss it. And I don't want any one of your hearers to be in that crowd. Well, Jack, you uh, summarized your message on the rapture, and I know you've given more than one, but the one I was watching online last night, and you said, you know, how do we prepare? How do we get ready? And you said a storm is brewing. My goodness, the last month I've done programs where I'm I'm giving a forewarning that a storm is coming, and then I hear you saying in this message, a storm is brewing. When we enter the storm season here in uh, in the in the U.S., we need to get ready for that storm. We need to to do some kind of preparation, whether it's boarding up a window or whatever. How can folks get ready for the storm that could be brewing now? You know, I'm going to put it this way. I live in Southern California where the ground shakes. Everything of value we fasten down. We fasten things even like our water heaters down because the ground shakes. Secure your home. Secure your faith. Secure your heart. Secure your eyes. If you're prone to looking at things, stop it now. If you're prone to going places where the Holy Spirit's saying, don't go, then listen, just like we prepare for earthquakes here, prepare now. Secure yourself. The second thing is this. Wash your car. In Southern California, people have clean cars. I don't know what the deal is. Well, listen, wash your life. Wash your life clean in the Word of God. Secure yourself. Live for God. Wash your life in the Word of God. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't stop advancing. And the final thing is, be out and about. I live in Southern California. We spend much more time outdoors every month out of the year than indoors. Get out to the ends of the earth. Spread the gospel. Tell your neighbors. Have you told them about the gospel? Tell people, restaurants, drive throughs anybody, everybody, be active about your faith before we run out of time. Be busy about your father's business. I got to tell you what, you do that and you'll find yourself much less prone to wandering off the path. You'll find yourself delighted in pleasing the Lord who has given you a task until he comes. You know, the other thing that hit me as I was watching you last night, Jack, was there's so many who say that, let's just take the the, the, the rapture theory and, for that matter, some uh, dispensational theology. Oh, it all came along, you know, John Darby, whatever, or is this such a new teaching? Not so. The imminent return of Jesus Christ was one of the fundamental hopes of the early church, folks, early church, even though today few will teach on the subject, as Jack and I have been saying, but this imminent return of Christ hope was prominent in the early church. People, for some reason, that concept has vanished. I don't know why. I don't know. In fact, I agree with what you just said, but I'd like to, uh, I'd like to push it even further back because the reason why, Jan, it was the belief of the early church is because Jesus introduced the rapture in John 14, verses 1, 2, and 3. It was Paul the Apostle in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, that said, we who are alive and remain shall be caught up. Paul lived. In fact, every one of Paul's eschatological arguments was in the imminent in the present. Mm -hmm. There's only one time that Paul surrenders that view, only once. It's in 2 Timothy chapter 4, and he says that he is going to die, his departure is at hand, but he's not worried about it because the Lord is going to give him a crown, and not only him a crown, but all those who have loved his appearing. His appearing. It was, it's the first and last time that, that the apostle ever mentioned the coming of Christ in the sense that he was going to miss it. Every other argument Paul gave was in the eschatological or imminent now, and that comes from the apostle himself. We talk about some of these issues and a whole lot more. 
at our Understanding the Times conferences yearly. Again, this year, Saturday, September the 29th, Grace Church, Eden Prairie, Minnesota. That is a suburb of Minneapolis. Again, I make the reference that we're ticketing the event, and I keep referencing that, number one, you have to have a ticket to get in. The important thing is we have had crowds so big in the last two, three years that our freeways are backed up with people trying to get there. Is that some glorification of this ministry? No! It's an indication that a remnant out there is very, very hungry, starving for the good news that the king is coming again, that we can look up, that we do not have to live in a hopeless world because our headlines may tell us things are hopeless. Try to see headlines as a harbinger of his return. Jack Hibbs, we're going to talk to you at least one more time before September the 29th, and we will then see you on that wonderful day. I want to thank you for spending the hour with me today. I want to go out of the program just with a short little saying. I use it every now and then, and it reads this. When the time was right, the sea parted, the walls fell down, the lions went hungry, the sun stood still, the waves were calm, the stone was rolled away, the clouds were parted, the Lord ascended. And when the time is right, the King of Kings will return. God is never early, and He's never late. He's always right on time, and His plan for you is good. I want to thank you for listening, and we will talk to you next week. Love everlasting, reigning on high. Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Highest praises Thank you for joining us for today's Understanding the Times Radio with Jan Markell. Across America and across the World Wide Web, we continue to report current events from a biblical perspective. Every weekend, this broadcast comes to you at no cost, but it costs us thousands of dollars. As we produce and distribute this weekly media outreach, would you consider standing with us? With our ever-changing world and a woman of faith need to keep informed, we need to be aware of current events as viewed through the lens of Scripture. Week after week, Jan Markell brings you a compelling hour, pointing out the dangers in today's culture and bringing hope through faith in Jesus Christ. We're asking you to join us in this listener-supported ministry as our financial partner. Please write with your tax-deductible gifts to Olive Tree Ministries, Box 1452, Maple Grove, Minnesota, 55311. Contributions are also welcome at olivetreeviews.org or by phone when you dial 763-559-4444. Don't forget global updates with a biblical worldview are yours around the clock at olivetreeviews.org. We look forward to hearing from you soon. We appreciate your continued prayer support for Jan and her media team. Jan Markell returns next week with another information and inspiration-packed hour designed to help you understand the times. 